All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about Shit Show Spear, Scar Scarlet Spear. This is the new event that came out that is half Railjack, half ground. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am almost done getting all the rewards out of the event outside of this I shit. claim this territory and in the name of I'm yours almost truly. done with just even caring about this piece of shit event. There have been an endless strew of problems and it's just set up in the most back-ass words way I can think of. So let's let's go into why that is happening. We've got Scarlet Spear here, and then you get these different badges or whatever at 10,000 points, 30,000 points, and 50,000 points. When you click on this, you go to the Earth Scarlet Spear Relay, and there's like a million fucking things here. And this is immediately confusing, I'm sure, to many people who look at this. So Murex Driven Away is a thing that is counting up. It counts up to 100. Now, I want to go in here and explain how all this works so that we can get a clear picture of this. And I am going to show a run of both the, the uh, space side and the ground side, just so you guys can see that stuff. That might all be compiled at the end of this video, but we're going to talk about this. So you show up here, and then on here you can see Murex driven away, 100 out of 100, uh, 44 minutes or whatever remains. So this is on a three-hour timer to kill 100 Murex. And then there are ground squads and space squads. The ground squads get codes and send send codes to the space squads so that they can kill the Murex that are in space. The ground squads are killing the bugs on the ground, essentially, that have the codes. So that's how the Murex die. Okay, so this is squad link with the two squads helping each other in heavy quotation marks. This is, it falls apart and doesn't work very often, and it adds nothing to the experience. You would not know that the ground squads and space squads need to work together unless you're in the space squad not getting any fucking codes because it's either broken or there are no ground squads because the space squad is more rewarding. So people are doing ground squads now because ground squad is actually not reliant on space squad. The ground squads can send codes to nobody and just send it up into the air and nothing can happen. And that's... You'll, you'll still get your points for the event. So ground squad is the more consistent way to do it, but space squad, if it worked, would be more efficient point in time wise. But the problem is that it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, it's extremely frustrating and really hardcore anti-community. On top of that, so as you can see, the 100 Murex have been driven away. That means for the next 53 minutes, you can't do this event. And there's a multitude of reasons why that is. So if you're in, if, if you start off and you're at the beginning of the three hours and there is zero Murex driven away, and it takes the, the whole instance, let's say two hours, to get rid of all the Murex, that seems like reasonable. All the Murex are driven away after two hours. There is then a one hour and 10 minute timer, because there's a 10 minute timer after this timer, before things can come back, before you can play the event again. And if you go from this relay to try and help a different relay, your rewards reset, and then you get fucking nothing because the reward system for this is fucking broken. So the way you get points is you get points for the ground mission and you get points for the space mission. You get different amounts of points. The space mission is more efficient, uh, but the ground mission can technically get you a higher total. It usually just takes longer. So we can see here that these are like the, the points that people are getting. Just over 5,000. This is the, the, the top 10 for this relay that I just happened to join. And this is the top 10 on the receiver side uh, that you can see over here for the space team. So, the way that points are doled out now, because this has changed like six times, and I'm almost certain that it still does not fucking work, because I have never received the correct amount of points that you're supposed to get. Um, this, if you've accrued 5,000 points, you will get a 10,000 point bonus if all of the 100 Murex are driven away, right? So everyone in this relay should, that has accrued 5,000 points, get a 10,000 point bonus which means that you're essentially earning triple the points that you are actually earning on the ground, because 5,000 is, like, a reasonable number for you to get to and then just, like, stop. Because that's um, about two and a half runs of ground uh, and, like, three runs of space. So there's that. Here's the thing. 
this is it's a doubled up to 10,000 bonus. So if you get 2,000 points, you're going to get uh, 4,000 in your inbox for a total of 6,000. So you're essentially earning triple up until you've earned 5,000 points per every three hours. Because this system doesn't work, I'm going to show you guys what I have been getting in my inbox for these point totals. So we have... Where's the first one? Here's, here's the first one. So I got the Murex 3 emblem. So that means I hit rank 3. This is back whenever your rank determined your bonus points. So I should have received 10,000 extra points. I also got the level 1 Chondrix thing because I did some of the other side of the mission. But instead, I only got 2,000 Scarlet Credits instead of the 10,000 because it was very unclear at the beginning of this event that if you did both sides, you did not get an accrued bonus for like 12,000, which is probably how it actually should have worked. So instead, I got only 2,000 for this small badge and didn't get any of the points that I should have accrued from this large emblem. Then it got changed to just be points that you're supposed to get for your individual emblems. So I got a level 1 and a level 2. And then I got 6,570 Scarlet Credits. So, so this one is not based on the emblems at all. And it's like, this is like the level 2 one, but this is on the doubling system. That's weird. But it doesn't accrue anything from your lower emblem, so they're not added together. Like, the, each side isn't doubled up to a total of 5,000 points, and then you get... So, so on this one, I had the level 1 side and the level 2 side. And what should have happened is those scores should have added together to give me 10,000. But instead, I only got one side of bonus Scarlet credits. So if you're going to do this, there's no point in doing both sides like the event seems to think you should. You only ever do one side up to 5,000 points and then stop fucking playing. Because there's no point in doing both. So then on this one, I got an emblem and nothing. So there's that. And then on this one, this is like the apology credits that they just released. And it basically just takes whatever your current score was and doubles it. They, they just did this for everybody. They took whatever your current score was and they doubled it. So I got 23,730, which is not fixing the event because the event is still a convoluted nightmare of points and just absolutely ass backwards shit on how to give people points. The way to fix this is really simple. Don't have a bonus and just triple the reward output of both sides. Like, if there's there's all these time limitations and other bullshit, that also sucks. Because this, this crew that was here now has, like, 50 minutes before they can do more of the event. Like, they release content with the time gate, just like Eidolons, that we all pretty much universally hate, I'm gonna say. This is just that on a micro level. So, it's just... It's just unfortunate. Like it's it's very very bad. Like it's just it's just the same mistake with Eidolons, but on an event that lasts a month. And like the scoring has been a nightmare. And like even if it was working the way it was supposed to, it wouldn't be good. Now let's get into the rewards that you are getting theoretically through this system if it was working. So you come to Little Duck and you go to trade. And you do need to do this right off the bat just to get the op link, which you need for both missions. This only costs a thousand credits and it's automatically added to your gear wheel, which is totally fine. But let's talk about what's in here and what you're getting for this really inconvenient event. So we have the CD Lacera, which is a new weapon, costs 20,000 Scarlet Credits. And we have the Basma Blueprint, which is 15,000 Scarlet Credits. So these are weapons that need a slot and almost certainly need a catalyst for them to be like reasonably usable that you are getting for three hours plus of farm. So right off the bat, I don't know if these weapons are really good yet. I'm going to test them and I have the blueprints building right now since they we got like the apology credits. I had enough to grab both of these. So those are building right now and I'll be able to tell you if they're worth it fairly soon I'll say but these not coming like as a one-time reward or uh, with a potato and a slot is really really unfortunate considering the large amount of credits that they cost on top of that we have the ballroom simulacrum which is a fine reward it's like a nice optional side thing costs 5,000 scarlet credits reasonable fine uh the phase lift and gilded clan sigils uh, so you can take your clan sigil and then wear it on your front or back. Totally a reasonable thing. A reasonable reward. 2,000 credits apiece. Fine. Fair enough. 
Then we have the Earth Console and the Murex Console, which are some ship, ship decorations that cost 5,000 apiece. All right. Then the other unique reward we have is Stance Forma. These are 5,000 apiece, and you get one blueprint, and they cost 100,000 credits, a Forma, an Argon Crystal, and five Nitane Extract. Nitane Extract? Is of course a limited supply from the night wave oh yeah by the way the night wave has been running for over 150 days in this intermission by the way just as a reminder to anyone who was wondering so that's how you get nitane and originally on release this cost 10 nitane and they chunked it down to five but let me tell you this forma is not worth any of the resources to get it 5,000 scarlet credits a price too high even if i was getting a fully built stance forma no, like without the crafting time, without any of the other things to build this, 5,000 Scarlet Credits, not worth it. Out and out, just straight off the bat, not worth it because this Forma is useless. There are few to literally none of the re like weapons that we'd usually be using in Warframe where this would be a good idea to invest in. The one and only weapon where this is even a conceivable thing is the Cronin Prime. And for that, you can just put an extra regular Forma into one of the slots and then not have to worry about a Stance Forma and just switch the stances even though the polarity is wrong, which is the thing that I've done on that weapon. That is the single weapon I have been able to come up with where I would ever even theoretically want a Stance Forma type effect. So this is useless. Most melee weapons in the game only have one stance in effect because their other stances are dog shit or garbage. So they have one good stance, and they form up for that one good stance and don't use the shitty ones. So don't waste your time or effort on these stance form of blueprints. It is a waste of your time. So we have that, where we have a lot of very expensive weapons that don't come with potatoes or slots. We have those. Uh, and then we have these other cosmetic things, which are actually honestly fine. These, these I, have, I have no issue with these. But then we have our canes. Now, Arcanes, as DE seemed to imply on the run-up to this event, this was going to be another very good way to get Arcanes, and we'd be able to, like, just get Arcanes more actively, it felt like. With the changes they made to Arcanes and, like, giving them a higher rank, this was going to be a way to, like, fill out our collection and maybe get those rank 3s that we had up to rank 5. But no, definitely fucking not. So, these have different prices based on the rarity they are, and at current, there are only commons and uncommons available. So, we don't know how much rares or legendary ones are going to be, but we can surmise that they are going to be more. Now, these show on here as rank 5. And if you, if you had to pay 1,000 Scarlet Credits for a rank 5 of these, that would be the deal of a motherfucking lifetime. That would be the hotshot deal. That would be way too cheap to offer these for. Same for the 1500 that the uncommons cost. But you don't get a rank 5, as this UI seems to say. You are getting a rank 1. So whenever you click in further, you see the unranked one that you are actually going to be getting. This just shows you the full effect of these whenever they are fully leveled up, which requires 21 of each of them. So this is 21,000 for a set, which means... That that is, let's call it four and a half hours of your time to get a full set of a common arcane. Now, let me tell you what you could almost certainly do with those four plus hours of your time to get these way easier. You could go farm prime parts and then sell those prime parts and just buy a full set and probably have some fucking platinum left over. Like, you could probably go farm prime parts for an hour, and then let's say it takes you an hour to sell them. Fuck it. Uh, and you would have enough to buy a full set of Arcane Nullifier very, very quickly because it is not expensive. I'll show the price on screen of an Arcane Nullifier at current, at max rank. It is not hard to get that amount of platinum. And this is a good Arcane. This is an Arcane that is like a meta choice or Eidolons, so you can ignore all the magnetic effects. It's not like this is a nothing arcane that no one uses. This is a desirable arcane. So it's absurd to me that you could spend that insane amount of time just to get a common arcane? A thousand credits a piece when we need 21 of them? Plus, 
that's only obviously you're only going to obviously be getting these arcanes after you get like the weapons and stuff that are exclusive to this event so you have to go through many many hours of farming this and then you're faced with like four hours for common arcanes and like i'm gonna say like six to seven for uncommons and who knows how many hours for rares and who knows how many hours for legendaries like i know this event lasts a month but that seems like real real wild style amounts and you'd just be better off selling prime parts and farming the platinum like that just seems like what you'd be better off doing for the price of pretty much all these arcanes especially the shitty ones like if de did a thing where like these prices were like changed based on their usage like if, if they took like how many people are using arcane tempo and then made it so that like energize was very expensive because it's in, it's very high used and energize costs like four thousand a pop because it's in really high demand and like lots of people use it already so if people want to get their sets it's going to take you a long time sure and then things like arcane nullifier would be more expensive common arcanes because this is one that sees a lot of use whereas arcane ice sees no use so maybe these are like a hundred a piece then like that that would be a, a reasonable system of like pricing these out but like these just aren't priced for their usefulness no one is fucking buying these arcane ice for a thousand a piece what to my knowledge arcane ice if you wanted to buy them are probably like two platinum which means you can get a full set of them very easily by selling like a single decent value prime part so i don't know where de got like the idea to put these prices on arcanes like this but it's absolutely absurd and i don't know why it is the way that it is but yeah with that i'm going to explain the different missions on either side starting with ground okay now let's talk about the ground mission that you are about to see so uh, on this ground mission uh we have uh four warframes we have wisp mesa uh, which is what i am playing here in this clip uh and then we also have saren who is doing a damage buffing build with her one uh because the murex things are weak to corrosive that we're gonna be shooting the big little let's call it eyeball for the sake of this video not being flagged by youtube um we're shooting that that's weak to corrosive damage so we're having saren boost all our corrosive damage way up uh and then we also have limbo who is going to be protecting the op links so basically this is an excavation except for you're killing the thing that you're arriving at you show up at the spot it drops down you shoot it you do a third of its health and damage it spawns a bunch of sentience you kill the sentience it opens back up you shoot it you kill the sentience it opens back up you shoot it you kill the sentience and then you can place the op links and send the codes theoretically up to the people who are in space so that they can complete their mission that is what you're doing you can do this up to 17 times i have the full 17 wave run i'm just going to put on the end of this video if anybody wants to see it um the team comp we were using if you wanted to switch to adaptation just to make it a little bit easier uh whenever you're on like the very last murex because enemies do get to a very very high level and it is theoretically possible to die there uh you could switch to a slightly more defensive build on mesa because i'm not using adaptation here um but that is a thing you could do moving on though just to explain these missions uh the space one you start off in the railjack and the mission is not really actually very railjack based so you start off and you're towing a big beacon thing you take the beacon and you put it in front of the ship and then you go park the railjack inside of the ship that you put it in front of in a place that is mostly safe and then one person which is me in this clip uh protects the ship on anyone that boards it and kills everything that shows up that's what you're mostly going to be doing if you are the one who owns the railjack usually i feel like that should be the person whose railjack it actually is should be the one defending it and hopefully if you have a rank 10 intrinsic in the first one which haha good luck um that person can teleport into the ship and place their op link down which is what you'll see me doing here uh because i have that intrinsic because i did the horrible horrible grind that is intrinsic but basically the other three people go inside and they find the spot inside the ship and they put their op links down and then limbo hits four and that makes it so the op links can't be damaged and then you wait for codes so if it is either not working which is an often case or if there's not enough people doing ground missions this will take a long time so squad link is a pure 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 bad time if you're in space because it either breaks and doesn't work or it just takes a long time because no one else is doing the other half so if you are one of those people in 
like if, if you're actually on like the oceana server or something or if it's just like very late at night for you potentially and there's just not a lot of people on doing space is basically a get fucked scenario and there are reports that i've heard from many people that they have actually gone and done the ground missions sent their codes and then gone and done the space missions and gotten their own fucking co like codes because of the way that this works and because that can be a more efficient way to do this is to just send yourself your codes so working together with other players is kind of not really a thing here because there's no way to organize a party of eight where one side is doing ground and one side is doing space because if you could do that this event would actually be a lot more functional than it is currently. As it stands now, Squad Link is a pure disadvantage to actually getting anything done. Because it is not only buggy, but it also just doesn't add anything to the mission. It's not making the mission better that someone else's username pops up and says, I sent the code, dude. Thumbs up. Like, that doesn't that doesn't do anything for the gameplay of, for, of Warframe at all. Like, it adds nothing. So this squad link stuff only ends up taking away from the experience and will make you resent other players or resent the way it was designed or resent this event and it only compounds with that if you're doing these missions and you get your 5,000 points and the other people in the relay don't kill all the rest of the murax like if you kill a bunch of the murax and the rest of them don't die like if it gets to say 97 and then like there are three left and the timer ends you don't get any bonuses so instead of getting fifteen thousand, you got five thousand over three hours of playing the event that's what can happen to you it happened to me but the reason it happened to me is another really fun one this event can break and then the people in space can't receive any codes you can't go any further so we were on like 95 murex done or whatever and then the people in space stopped receiving codes spontaneously so instead of it completing because my squad we realized that it wasn't going to get done so we went to go do it then we went to space and didn't get any codes and then we went to ground and sent codes and went to space and didn't get any codes again we didn't even get our own codes we couldn't get it done because the game just broke and then we were out a fucking two-thirds of the points we should have earned over a fucking three-hour period it is absolutely fucking insane to me that this was designed this way and it's it's just it's so terrible it is absolutely fucking awful like it had there's no redeeming point to designing this this way to like back end these rewards in this fucked up way or have these timers or like have this squad link like there's no reason for it just put a timer on the part where you would usually get codes or whatever and if there are codes being sent make it a bonus that you interacted with another player that would make me happy that other people are doing the event like why is there all this negative reinforcement where if like you're not getting codes then you're fucked get fucked instead of like oh you got special codes from someone else who's playing instead of the generic codes or something there's definitely ways to work that into like lore that can work in game where now you get a bonus reward because there are multiple players interacting with each other. That's what Squad Link should be. It should be someone else's name pops up on your screen and then you and them both get a bonus because it did. It shouldn't be this huge fucking negative. I don't know how, how it ended up like this. And basically, this event is a fucking mess. And I don't want to play any more of it. I really don't. It is so unrewarding. It's unrewarding and it feels bad to play and interact with. And it's not only because it's been broken since launch. Even through all of the fixes, it has never been an enjoyable time to interact with the systems it's trying to interact with. And even at full working order, it is mystifying why it is the way it is with the timers and the scoring being how it is. But yeah, hopefully a completely change it over the course of the month it's going to be up to make it so that all these things surrounding the what i will say are honestly some pretty fun missions like the space mission i don't mind it i actually kind of like the space mission if it progressed at any kind of a fast rate like and didn't have squad link involved with it at all i'd kind of enjoy myself doing that railjack mission which sounds wild and the ground mission it's just like remix excavation i'm someone who likes excavation and it's like a way more aggressive excavation so I'm fucking here for that. 
the actual missions that I'm being sent on are good, but everything that is around it is bad. And it's just, it's just wild. Because it's kind of the exact opposite of how Railjack was fucked up. So, t fucking turn this one inside out, I guess. Don't know. It's, it is mystifying. I will see you guys tomorrow.